Good morning, fellow Guardians. So, I just want to apologise for lack of content lately. I haven't been too well. As you can probably tell, I've still got a little bit of a cold. But it's not COVID, so don't panic. So, Grandmaster Nightfalls are reopening on the 22nd of June, which is this coming Tuesday. So, as some of you might be aware, I, last season I did the Grandmaster preparation videos for every Grandmaster for that season. And I'm going to start doing that again for this season. So, we're going to start with the Glassway. Now, this is an older Nightfall. It was, I think last season might be the season before but this was one of the harder grandmaster nightfalls that we've done in the past so just bear that in mind before we start so arkansola is the shields for the glassway so make sure you tweak your builds to accommodate those two in terms of shields is also overload and anti-barrier champions okay so before we get into it though obviously you will need to reach a power of 13 and 35 before you can access the grandmaster nightfalls itself Okay, so let's get into the video. Now, I've done one for each class, but obviously if you do two Titans and one Hunter, it's up to you what you want to run, but I'll just sort of run through one build on each character to sort of give you an idea. So, to start off with, the Hunter. Now, a few people have used Stasis before, but we found that Bottom Tree Hunter on the Void is probably one of the best things to do with the Omni Oculus, or if you haven't got it, the Sith Coyote. Just because this bottom tree here, you can make your teammates invisible, which is essential for that middle plate area where you've got to survive for like, I think it's like three or four minutes with lots of ads coming at you. So that's really helpful to keep your teammates invisible on that. Moving on from there in terms of weapons. Now, as I said earlier, it's overload and anti-barrier. So you're going to need like maybe one or one overload and two anti-barriers. In terms of Grandmaster, we found the scout rifle was going to be best because overload SMG you've got to get quite close and that can be quite dangerous so stick with a scout if you've got two people running scout rifles absolutely perfect so we're probably going to go one solar and one arc just for the shields so as, as you can see here I've gone for the vision of conflicts now run that with a sniper because there's a lot of range in here and snipers are just OP at the minute and we've gone with a anarchy as well now it's up to you what you want to run some people might run sleeper simulant but anarchy is just running absolutely amazing at the minute mainly because if you go on to and tie it with the breach and clear as you can see here which is available in the artifact right at the end up here now it does cost nine to put it on your item but it is worth it it will weaken your enemies and keep damage on them with the anarchy as well uh, and make them a big crit spot really it's essential and it will be really helpful throughout this nightfall but yeah that's basically it guys for the hunter now mod wise it's really whatever you compliments the build you're going to be running but i have actually run uh, as you can see here, if you put on some arc armor pieces, you can run Radiant Light with like powerful friends because that will bump you up your mobility and your strength as well, and that will really help out with staying alive. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the Hunter. So let's have a little move over to the Warlock. Now, Warlocks, I'll always say the same thing over and over again. Well, everyone needs a well on a Warlock. Everyone needs a Warlock well. So... As you can see here, I'm running it with the Phoenix Protocol. Now, this is when you get super energy for kills when you're inside the well. So if your whole team is in that well, like in that middle area, for example, when you're defending that plate, the more kills you get, you're just getting that shield back again. As well as if you're running like a Titan with the shield, he'll constantly give you orbs and you can just keep popping Wells of Radiances, which is essential. Now, in terms of weapon, I've gone for something a bit different here. Now, as I said earlier, it's Overload Champions. So, Divinity. Divinity is sort of an old favourite from Garden of Salvation. Absolutely amazing because it stuns the Overload Champions. Now that is definitely needed. It's also Arc as well, which helps with the Arc Shields. Because uh, throw a Divinity on an Overload Champion, by the time it's stunned, you've got that bubble around and your two teammates can just go ham and kill him as quick as possible, which you need if you're 25 under light in the Grandmasters. Now I've also run it with a Fate Bringer just for an extra bit of Overload as well, because you don't really want to be using all of your Overload ammo if you don't need to but again if you're comfortable with just using divinity you can throw another like a scout rifle on or auto rifle or whatever you fancy using okay and apart from that a rocket launcher now rocket launchers are really good at the minute uh lasting impression is amazing with divinity because you can shoot a lasting impression rocket launcher and it will stick to the enemy and then you can switch to your divinity and hold it down by the time that your lasting impression rocket launcher explodes the divinity bubbles up and you're doing crit damage so that's definitely worth looking into and obviously, Breach and Clear, not as essential on this build because you haven't got a grenade launcher, but you just sort of tweak it to how you want to use it. And as I said, definitely the middle tree on the Warlock for that one. Okay, so that's it for the Warlock. Let's move over to the Titan. 
Now, Titan, you'll probably be aware, is what I run for most Grandmasters. Mainly because my teammates don't like running Titans. But there you go. So, apologies in advance because my Titan looks like Patrick Star from SpongeBob. I am aware. That was the intention. But, right, so, in terms of super, the middle tree void, you'll see this every one of the videos I've done. This is the one to be running. Especially with the Ursa Furiosas, because you're blocking damage with a Sentinel Shield, you'll normally get about 50 to 75% of your super back. And if you're running like a Well or a Tether, if they're making orbs for you, you've got it back sort of straight away. So that is essential if you want a successful run through the Glassway. Now, if it was up to me, you'd probably go for maybe two Titans and one Hunter. You can go for one of each, it depends on your playstyles, but two Titans work really well together because they're just feeding off each other's orbs. Especially in the final boss room of the glassway, it's very difficult and you've got to stay alive as, as much as possible. Okay, so in terms of weapons, uh, obviously we've gone for another scout rifle because you're going to need two anti-barriers because that's going to be essential because one isn't going to be enough on Grandmaster. You'll need two. Now you'll see I've gone for the Eternal Blazon. Now this is just because on the Punter you just saw earlier, I went for a Solar. So it's nice to have a primary ammo arc as well. Now you can do that with any other arcs scale rifle you want to use but this is one I just had on the character at the time so just just to show you uh, and obviously I've got succession as well just for that range now this is a god roll I found the reconstruction of Orpal weapon that is the best role I've found for the succession and I absolutely love it fantastic gun my favorite sniper for PvE and PvP actually uh, and obviously I've gone for the anarchy as well and tying that with the breach and clear again absolutely essential and I've gone for the powerful friends and radiant light for that increased stats as well but yeah, that's essentially it, guys. Now, another sort of idea of doing this, you can go for the Divinity, like you saw on the Warlock, and you can have two Izanagis. Now, that's just a lot more fun to do, because we, we quite enjoy doing the Izanagis Burden. But again, it's up to you guys what you want to do. If you're going to be running something completely different that I haven't mentioned, definitely mention it in the comments below, because it might help a few other people as well. But yeah, that's basically it from me, guys. So good luck on June 22nd for the very first Grandmaster Nightfall. I believe it's the Plug 1. So it'll be the adept version of the plug one, which again you can get with Reservoir Burst and it's just like sort of the old school fusion rifles as well. But yeah, that's it from me guys. So thank you very much for watching and toodles.